When you walk around the grounds of Gainesville State School, you'll see just about everything you would on any other high school campus. There are students, teachers, a computer lab, and a gym. Except here, the students are convicted criminals. It's an incarceration facility for kids that have uh, violated the law. Each day starts at a tiny dorm room they call home and continues marching from class to class, abiding by a strict schedule. In fact, the one thing that makes them feel like kids again is football. I'm just like you know, remote model on campus, you know what I'm saying? Everybody want to play on the football team. Just to put on a Tornado's uniform is a reward, not a right. You must have good behavior and good grades. Not to mention, every game is played on the road, but it's worth it to escape on Friday nights and enjoy a small piece of freedom they gave up. But each week, there comes that constant reminder of who they are and what they've done. They don't treat us as a regular person in the world. They treat us like we're just some alien, just from somewhere out, just out of nowhere. I mean, they look at us like animals in a cage, like we don't deserve a second chance or another opportunity to be something in life. After hearing the ridicule and losing eight straight weeks, the Tornadoes were once again on the road, traveling to play private school power great find Faith for the first time, who had moved up a division. Their head coach, Chris Hogan, had a game plan in mind, and it had nothing to do with football. We were going to show them that in this country, if you make the right decisions, people will get on your side and support you. And it doesn't matter what your background is, you can make it. In a selfless suggestion, Coach Hogan sent out an email and requested his fans, his players, parents, do something so out of the ordinary in the football culture. He asked them to cheer for Gainesville State. These young men will not have any fans outside of the faculty from their own school. Their parents will not be there. I want some Lion fans to sit on the visitor side and cheer for the Gainesville team throughout the game. I thought, okay, this is, this is cool that Chris wants us to do this, leading up to it. But getting there that night, it was so easy to transition from being a fan for the Faith Lions to a fan for the Tornadoes. You know, the idea of, uh, of giving and just being there to support those kids, those young men that have never had that before. So for the first time, the always on the road tornadoes would feel as if they were at home. And as kickoff approached, it was obvious something was different. It looked like they thought they were at the wrong end of the field because they know they don't have any fans. And we were just looking, I just looked, I just kept doing my plays. But I seen how they were split up, but I figured they just didn't have enough room on their side. I want y'all to line up in the line, they make, they're making a spirit line. I like say what coach? What you say? Can you beat that? And uh, he said they're making a spirit line for y'all to run through. I like yeah, that's what's up, sir. That's what's up. When it happened, it was just it was dynamic. It was one of the most unbelievable things I'd ever seen. When I ran through this, like I felt like it was just like some like angels or something. This all, this all I felt. I was just running through it as fast as I can. I just feel the wind rushing my face. That feeling of being unleashed lasted throughout the game, and so did the cheers. We had a penalty like the third play of the game, and I heard booing behind me. I turned around, and it was the, the great man fan. I remember when I was making like a play, I made a chocolate, and people were yelling my name. I'm like, I don't even know these people. They were just like ours that night. I, I can remember rooting for their little quarterback, and I felt like he belonged to me. Our kids were their kids, and their kids were our kids, and all kids were the same. It wasn't enough to lead the Tornadoes to victory. As expected, Grapevine Faith won 33-14, and the Tornadoes finished the season 0-9. But it didn't matter, because for the first time in a long time, someone was in their corner, and that alone was worth celebrating. <laughs> I was like, hey, y'all, this, this is going to get close, man. I don't care. I don't care if we lost tonight, man, because I was feeling good. I feel like we were in the Super Bowl championship game or something. Like, we won that. I mean, winning, like, in our heart, spiritual-wise, I mean, we won. I've, I've been in state championships of different kinds, and there's nothing was like this. Nothing. Isaiah and the rest of the Tornadoes will never forget the feelings they had on that night. And while it didn't erase the mistakes they've made, it showed 14 teenagers that regardless of the bad things they've done in their past, there was reason to look ahead. I cried. <laughs> when I, when, when after the game, I went back to my room, I cried. I think that your, your family are the only ones that love you. 
God ain't the only one love you. Other people love you too. This is what I was hoping and praying would happen. I hope that it gave them hope. I see the world in a different way now. I mean, I don't just see, like, I'm the victim no more. So much love because, you know, I came from a broken home family. So, I mean, having all that love, it just, just rose my spirits up. They got to be kids that night. They got to be a teenager and experience Friday Night Football in Texas. Yeah.